Hi y'all, it's Rachel here with Scientifically Engineered and I wanted to share with you the first 14 days that I have of 30 inks, 30 days. I was gonna do week by week and work got too busy the first two weeks in September. So um, I've been doing daily looks at the ink every day on my Instagram and on YouTube Shorts so you can see me swatch the ink um, mm. using a large ornament nib. Um, but as for actual writing samples and what I think of the inks, um, I'm going to do a video now of the first 14 days and then I'm going to try and do every five days subsequently until the end of September. And I'm going to try to, um, actually do it live so that you can see me or not live, but real time. So you can watch me writing to see how the inks perform. Um, but for today, um, what I have is my first 14 inks. And I'm using uh, the Galen Leather Everyday Book. This is a B6 size. It's 52 GSM Tomoy River. Um, I think this is sans and paper. I don't think this is the original Tomoy River. Not sure, but based on how it feels, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I have swatches in here. And then I also have swatches for most days in my um, Odyssey Notebooks Cosmo Air Light Paper. So you can see the inks on different paper. Okay. So the first day was Festive Joy by Diamine. Um, I put this in the Esther Brook Punch with a journaler nib. Um, I found that this ink has a pretty average flow. Um, and I did find, I thought this used to be my favorite purple. I'm looking for like a really bright, in your face, royal purple with some sheen in it. And Festive Joy was, I think what I thought was it. Um, especially in large swatches, it's, it's very bright, um, saturated, and there's a lot of sheen, but I just find in writing, it's still too dark for what I'm looking for. Um, so for that reason, I gave it an eight. I gave it an eight for flow. It wasn't as wet as I was hoping that it was. Um, the sheen is really good, but I prefer green sheen in my purple inks. So that's why I gave it a six instead of a 10. It does have a lot of gold sheen, but I'm more of a green sheen for purple ink. Um, the name, I didn't really care for it. Some inks have really um, cute names that I think are pretty aptly named. So I thought I'd <laughs> include that in there as a fun little thing. So overall, I gave this ink about a seven. It's a good ink. Diamine always makes good inks. Um, but once I actually used it in one of my favorite pens, I found that I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. The next day was Pelican Edelstein uh, Mandarin. This is a pretty standard bright summery orange. It's not really what I would consider a fall orange, though looking at it now, it could do fine for pumpkin, but I think it's a little bit too light uh, for fall, um, but it is beautiful. There is a lot of nice shading and um, the flow is really good. So, um, and the name is perfect. This is the exact color of a nan mandarin. So I gave it a nine and I've already forgotten that I was gonna show you <laughs> all over the place, see? But I wanted to make this video even though I knew I was gonna be all over the place because, I don't know, let's see. So for Festive Joy, I did an actual writing sample in Cosmo Air Light. And it's going to be hard to see, but there is sheen showing up on Cosmo Air Light, but the color is just too muted for me. Um, I wrote about the purple frog or the Indian frog, frog or the pig nose frog. Um, it's from Western India, but anyway, that was a uh, festive joy. And let's see, I know I have Mandarin in here somewhere because it's on my Instagram. So let's see. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, here we go. So this is Pelican Edelstein Mandarin. Um, on Cosmo Air Light Paper, it's a little bit uh, more muted, but you can really see some good shading on uh, Cosmo Air Light Paper. So I am i don't like lighter inks, but I am a fan of this Mandarin. I think it looks good. So day three, I did Brilliant Beanstalk. This is a Ferris wheel press ink, and I actually put it in a Ferris wheel press pen. Um, this one I might have also not had a big swatch for. I really like this ink, and I didn't think I was going to. Um, 
it's a lighter uh, green with some green shimmer and the shimmer just matches the ink perfectly and it's you know how sometimes when you use a shimmer ink, once you get to the bottom of a writing sample or you've written with it for a while, that sheen kind of disappears, or the shimmer kind of disappears? Well, I don't know if you can see in this writing sample, but every time I pick up my pen, because I've had this one inked for a little bit, actually, every single time I pick it up and write, shimmer. And it flows really well. Um, it's very legible. I didn't think it was going to be legible based on kind of the color it is in the container. Um, I thought the name was perfect and very cute. Um, this honestly probably could have gotten a 10. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this ink. I actually really highly recommend it. Um, I think it's very unique and fun. Uh, day four, I did Aurora Borealis from Diamine and I had this in a stub nib, which seeing it on the paper, um, I wish I would have inked all of these inks in a stub nib just because I feel like you could see the ink so much better. Um, but it does kind of artificially make it feel like the ink is probably wetter than it is. Um, whereas when I put it in a finer nib, one that I would be more likely to use, I can actually see how it would perform. But I put this one in my Skogski, um, I think it's called a Saguaro. Um, but I have a Heinz 1.1 stub on it and it's a teal color with some red sheen if you can see. Um, the ink itself is fun. Uh, I was just having problems overall. One with I was having some railroading with the nib which isn't necessarily the ink it's more of a nib um, and this is actually a fairly wet ink so um, you can't really blame it but something that was bothering me is these 30 mil diamine bottles are such a pain. <laughs> One to fill your pen, none of my pens fit in here well. And two, when I use my dip pen, I just dip the nib straight into the bottle and it doesn't fit. And so it's like I have to put it in, dip it upside down, it gets ink everywhere. And so um, I was getting annoyed <laughs> at that, but it's like, I don't wanna buy the full 80 mil bottles because they have so many beautiful colors that I wanna try. I don't need 80 mils of all of them, but these are the bane of my existence. They're, they, they're very, uh, small but hold a lot of ink so they like they're good for storage but um, and if you throw them on the ground they're plastic so they don't break but yeah that's neither here nor there I gave it a 9 overall if it was in an 80 mil bottle would it have maybe gotten a 10 possibly <laughs> that one I do have a sample of and this is actually on 52 GSM original Tamoy River paper um, yeah, just a really pretty teal with some magenta sheen. And again, it's a pretty wet ink. And this next one is a drier ink. This is actually a pretty dry ink, and this is Sunburn. Now, Sunburn is a Pen Chalet exclusive. It's a Robert Oster ink, but you can only get it at Pen Chalet. Um, they have a few inks by Robert Oster that are in their like Arizona line because they're based out of Arizona. And I like all of them. Um, I think I like every single ink in that collection. Um, I really like the Desert Southwest color scheme, so um, I'm a fan. This is it on Cosmo Air Light Paper. You can see it's slightly lighter, a little bit more muted. It looks more orange on this Tamoy River and a little bit more, like it leans more yellow on Cosmo Air Light. But I don't know if you can tell, it definitely has some sheen on the outside of the letters, kind of just a it almost looks like graphite, to be honest. <laughs> it's like graphite outline. It makes for really cool effects. Um, I put this in a Twisby Eco Fine, which is a fine nib pen, so it probably exasperated the dryness of the ink, and even so, it was fine. I didn't have any skipping or any problems. Um, I did give it a lower score on the flow with a 7. I love the color. Um, I like that graphite sheen. I thought it was pretty neat. The name's cute. Um, they have cuter names in that collection than Sunburn, but overall it's a, it's a really good ink. Uh, day six was Olive Swirl. This is from the 2022 uh, Diamine Ink Mint calendar. And this is a chameleon ink. Uh, and what that means is the shimmer in it looks different depending on how you're looking at it. Like I think for you right now, the shimmer looks green, which is funny because I'm sitting like, I don't know, four inches away from my phone right now and it looks red 
from my eyes. So that's, it's, it's, it's really unique. Um, they've got a couple of colors that are chameleons. Um, I like the olive green color. I'm kind of into that color right now. I think it's kind of having its moment. I put this in a Jinhao 82 fine, which is like a knockoff version of a sailor. Um, I don't really like sailors because, um, I feel like the, I don't like the feedback of the nib. Um, a lot of people do, but it's just not my thing, but I like the shape and the color. So that's why I get these. I know it's controversial, but it's what it is. Um, the flow's a little dry. I think that partially has to do with it being a light color, excuse me, and partially it being a shimmer color. Um, so I gave it a pretty low score for flow, a six. It's fine, again, in a fine nib. It did just fine, but could be better. Color, I gave it a 10. I love olive green. Um, no sheen. Shimmer, I gave a seven. And the reason I gave it a seven is it's very unique. Like, I don't know anybody other than Diamine that's doing, like, this two-toned shimmer. I'm sure there's someone else, but I don't know of them. The part that kind of bothered me is to the opposite of the Ferris Will Press, Brilliant Beanstalk, I feel like the shimmer is just lacking in the writing sample. Like I can, can't really see it very well and it just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot, where did I put that? It just doesn't feel like there's enough shimmer. If I want, if I'm using a shimmer ink, I want there to be shimmer. <laughs> and, and this one, I feel like it's just lightly dusted. So maybe that's your thing and maybe you'd like that but I would have preferred more. Let's see, do I even have this one in there on my Samoy River? Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can see here, now it looks red to you, huh? So it's pretty neat. It looks red to you here. This one, I feel like I'm looking at it and it looks like the green and the bottom of the bottle, it looks both red and green. I don't know how they do it, but it looks quite cool. Okay, so day seven I did Birmingham Streetcar. Um, I love Birmingham inks because I think that the brand itself is very cool. I love their packaging. I love that it, it's literally two guys. I think they're brothers, and then I think their mom helps them out sometimes. And they have all of these really cool colors. This streetcar is one of my favorite colors. I'm really into, like, clay, brick rust orange colors and that's what this is and so the flow is actually really good it was in a fine nib and it was really pretty good um I gave it a seven and that's probably got to do with it being a fine nib the color 10 it's great I don't think it could be any better uh no sheen no shimmer there's some shading but no sheen uh the name usually Birmingham actually has really cute names but for this one I don't actually know the meaning behind streetcar maybe it's a type of plant or something but um yeah overall i give it a nine i think it's a pretty good ink and again i do really like that brand here it is in the cosmo or light paper again slightly more muted this one you can actually see you're not going to be able to see it i don't think because i can barely see it there's a tiny bit of like a goldish sheen around the edges, but it's, you can barely see it. So in regular writing, it's gonna be almost non-existent. Um, something else about these inks that's kind of fun, you actually can kind of see it in my ink water here. They like have some neon component in these inks. Actually, let's see, maybe I can just put a little in, see if you can tell. So it's like when you rinse the nib off, it turns, look at that. Are you kidding me? Isn't that crazy? I don't know what it is. Um, but a, a, quite a few of their inks, especially when they have like these, um, these orangish or more, more warmer tone colors, like it turns radioactive. I showed my dad that I was like, dad, look. <laughs> so I, I, I'm a huge fan, obviously I'm just rambling about how cool it is, but like, I don't know, pretty neat. I need to dump that out before my cats drink it. Day eight was Imperial Purple, which I was hoping was going to be my dupe for Festive Joy. They're both diamine, but Festive Joy, because it's part of the ink mint, is a little bit pricier. I thought I liked Festive Joy more because in the swatches I like Festive Joy more, but now I've completely done a 180 because Imperial Purple looks much brighter and lighter in an actual nib, which is what I'm looking for. Not only that, but I actually think it sheens more. 
I still wish it were a green sheen. The flow is fine. Um, it's better than Festive Joy. And um, yeah, so I, I liked it. Um, I gave the name a zero. I don't want to think about imperialism <laughs> when I'm using my inks. I know it's probably just another way to say royal purple. It all means the same thing, but I don't know. I think it would be cooler if they named it after a flower, but yeah. So I do recommend this ink, I think, if you're looking for kind of like that substantial purple. Um, and it is cheaper, again, than the Ink Think calendar. Um, you get more ink for a lower price. So um, next, I didn't put the day down, but this is day nine, I'm pretty sure, is Monteverde's um, ink exclusive to Goulet Pen Company, which is Blue Skies. And this is kind of like, if you watch the pen cast, this is like a blue, goulet, goulet blue. Um, it's bright. It's just standard. It's got uh, magenta sheen. It flows like crazy. I think all, like most Monteverde inks I've used flow like crazy. It's a beautiful color. I really like this blue. It's standard, but it's bright and it's bold. Um, my only problem with that this ink is sometimes it is misbehaved and I'll show you some misbehaving if I have it in here somewhere. Oh, I forgot to show you dye mine Imperial purple. Sorry. All over the place. Um, but yeah, you can see the gold sh sheen here on, um, Cosmo Air Light as well. But the thing with, oh, I don't have it in the Cosmo Air Light or do I? I know I do. It's like, sometimes it bleeds, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it feathers, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, it's one of my favorite inks. But when it does, obviously it annoys me a little bit. So this is Blue Skies on Cosmo Air Light paper. Again, just beautiful sheen, beautiful color. Um, but as you can kind of see in the back, none of the other colors bleed, just this one. And it's really not that bad on Cosmo Air Light Paper. And on the new Tomoy River Paper, it's okay. Or on the old Tomoy River Paper, excuse me, it's okay. On the new Tomoy River Paper, it, I know this just looks like show through, but it's not. It's actually bleed through. Um, and sometimes I find, like, if I wrote on a different page in this notebook, it might feather. So I don't know if it's, like, when my oil, or when the oils from my finger touch the page, if it makes it feather more, but this ink can be finicky. But when it behaves, yeah, it's a good ink. Okay, day 10, moving into the Waringle inks. Um, I did five days straight of Waringle inks, or four days. We'll find out. Uh, this is I Am A Cat. Um, it's a gray with a ton of gold shimmer. Um, I loved this ink. The flow is pretty good. Um, this isn't an extra fine Twisby Ego and it actually flows better than some of the fine Egos did. Um, the color is kind of boring. It's kind of a standard gray. I'm not a huge gray girl, but I do love the gold shimmer. Um, I was, um, I might've said this in another video, but one of my favorite grays is actually Ferris Wood Press and Atlas Stationers, Atlas Iron Ore. That has silver shimmer. So if you're not into silver shimmer and you're into gold, you might like this one better. I gave the name a 10 because I love cats. All over, I gave it a nine. It's well behaved. It The shimmer lasts. I'm looking at all over right now and it's got a ton of shimmer on it. Even, even you can see that in the camera. So very good ink. Um, Wearing Gold makes pretty good inks and I think this one's no exception. The next one, is, and I know that a lot of you watching this will have the same feeling as me. This is one of my all-time favorite inks ever. Um, this is Keong He from Waringle. Um, it's like a yellowy orange. It flows pretty good, but the color is what is just like out of this world. I love it. It's falling leaves. It's like the changing of the seasons. It's beautiful. It's bright. It's legible. It, one of my favorite colors literally ever in a pen. So yeah, it gets a 10. Um, Kyung Hee is, I think, a female Korean writer. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that that's part of the um, writer series that Waringle has. Day 12, another Waringle ink. This is The Secret Garden. This is a lighter green with some gold shimmer. It's a beautiful color. Um, and I do like the gold with this tone of green. Um, the flow was pretty dry, to be honest. And 
The shimmer's fine. It lasted to the end. It wasn't as impressive as I Am a Cat, but it's pretty cool, uh, pretty good throughout. It's very, um, like, delicate. It's got, like, a delicate feminine vibe to it, um, and I like it. It's, it's still legible, um, but, yeah, a little bit on the dry side, I found it to be. I'm, again, forgetting to show you. Oh goodness. Okay. Well, here's I Am A Cat on Cosmo or Light Paper. Here's Kyung Hee. This is just, I, this is it. This is, this is number one. You're not going to beat this. This is the be most beautiful color that there is. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her name. Um, I think it's the name of the author, not the name of the book, but I don't know for sure. And then this is The Secret Garden. It looks actually, I think The Secret Garden looks 10 times better on Cosmo Air Light Paper than it does on Tomoy River. Um, I think Cosmo Air Light kind of pulls, it's hard to explain. Um, it like flattens the ink a little bit more and it makes it a little bit more legible. And so I think The Secret Garden looks really good on Cosmo Air Light Paper. Also, I find that Cosmo Air Light Paper sometimes helps with... Um, flow. Um, sorry, my cat is on my keyboard. I was hoping to do this all in one take. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move into Wayfair. Basically, what I'm saying is the flow is a little bit better on Cosmo or Light paper because it's softer, so more of your nib is actually touching the surface area of the pen. So next, is Wearing Ghoul's Wayfarer, which is a gorgeous ink. Flow, 10 out of 10. Color, 10 out of 10. It's got sheen. It's got shimmer. Um, the name, again, I'm assuming this is a book. I don't know. It's in English. I don't know what book it is. <laughs> and this is just, I, I can't get over it. Um, I ended up putting this in a, um, in a narwhal dusk I think it's called and it was a fine nib and it's it's being re-inked tomorrow because I'm almost out and this is what two days ago it I can't recommend this ink enough this is this is one of my favorites um if you can see it's got it's a like teal blue ink with aqua blue shimmer and then some magenta sheen it looks great on Cosmo Air Light Paper as well. A little bit less of the sheen visible, which is interesting, but that shimmer is just insane. Again, flow is really, really good, especially for a shimmer. The shimmer sticks around, not as strong as in the beginning, but it sticks around decently. Um, good ink. And I think this is gonna be the last one. Yes, the last one. And then next time around, it'll be more cohesive. <laughs> and refined. Uh, but this is the last wearing gold ink of this section and this is Robinson Crusoe. This is a what I consider a chromo shading ink. It goes down like a turquoise but then you get the green into almost yellow. There's a little bit of magenta sheen in this deep swab. It is, it, it reminds me of like Sailor Ink Studios or or the chromo shading series that they have. Beautiful chromo shading. Um, I did not like it in a Twisby Eco Fine. The flow was kind of dry. And then also when it's in that fine of a nib, you can't, you don't get to experience the chromo shading. So I definitely re recommend this ink in a broad or a even better a stub nib. And that's what it'll go in the next time I use it to ink something up because it really is very unique. It's very um, tropical, and I think it looks great. Here it is on Cosmo Air Light Paper. It still has the chromo shading. No sheen on Cosmo Air Light Paper, but looks really good. Beautiful ink. Um, I didn't find the flow to be too bad when it was in a broader nib. It's just that finer nib, I think, that is the problem. So yeah, so that was the first 14 days, I guess, maybe I said 15 earlier, of 30 inks, 30 days. Um, the next time around, I think what I'm going to try and do is take you along each individual color um, as I'm actually writing it out. So you can see 
with your own eyes, how you think that the flow looks upon writing, etc. So yeah, thanks for sticking with me for this discombobulated video. Um, if you're doing 30 inks, 30 days, I'd love to hear what inks you're choosing. Um, if you actually want to see my day by day, um, I do the large ornament nib um, swatches on YouTube shorts, TikTok, and on Instagram reels every single day. Um, and those are uh, much more refined <laughs> and calculated. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again, hopefully in about five days with the next five inks. Thanks y'all. Bye.